Thank you very much, and thank you for inviting me to this uh, forum. I will try to give you a flavor of what's going on at uh, the IMO, focusing on both the EDI and on the market-based measures. Okay, so we start with this picture, which is a, a picture from uh, the latest MEPC, February 27 to March 2nd. You, see, you can see the Secretary General, Mr. Sekimichu, addressing the plenary. Here's another picture from uh, the uh, uh, MEPC. Uh, last Monday was Kathari Deftera, so this is a picture from the dining, dining hall. Uh, a member of the Greek delegation, uh, which is shown in this picture, has brought uh, taramosalata, lagana, things like that. So uh, we didn't have a problem. We see pizzas here, however. Yes, uh, the it's pizza, was, pizza was brought by Panos Zachariadis. Ah. <laughs> anyway, uh, the classical breakdown of measures that are taken to reduce uh, emissions is uh, these three categories, technical measures, operational measures, and market-based measures. Now, in my opinion, this distinction is artificial in the sense that you can have a market-based measure like a tax that can induce either operational measures like speed reduction or it can induce in the long run technical measures. But basically, this is the, this is the, the breakdown. You can see one of the technical measures that is being discussed. Uh, this is a kite. Okay, uh, maybe you can reduce uh, fuel consumption by something like 5% but it's not uh, something that you can see very frequently. Another one is this uh, bubble generation scheme. You generate bubbles at the keel of the, of the ship, uh, and, uh, and then you, you reduce uh, frictional resistance. And of course, one issue is whether the energy you need to generate the bubbles is less than the energy you save. But this is one of an, another measure. Now, there are several parallel tracks here as far as uh, emissions reduction. One is the SOX NOX track, uh, where the purpose is to reduce SOX emissions, uh, sulfur dioxide. These, these are not greenhouse gases. They create things like acid rain and things of that nature. So there is a lot of uh, talk about this and a lot of legislation. I'm not going to focus on this. The second track is the greenhouse gas track, and then it, it, is, it is further broken down into two subtracks one that deals with EDI and the other deals with market-based measures. So the, the first track is uh, uh, what Mr. Remundos described in his previous talk on the EDI. The second is the market-based measures. And so far, these tracks have been discussed at the IMO in parallel. A question that comes to mind is, are they really parallel, these tracks? And the answer is no. Okay. Uh, the, the answer is no because, as you will see later, there are market-based measures that embed in the EDI in their formulation. So there, there are things that are kind of mixed. So the biggest development at MEPC 62, and actually this is a picture of the Greek delegation uh, last summer, is the, has been the adoption of EDI. Uh, as Mr. Remundos uh, said, it was adopted as an amendment to Marple's Annex 6. There was a fierce resistance by developing countries like China, India, Brazil, Saudi Arabia, and others. And the matter was really political. So at, at, at some point, it was put to, into a vote, and, and the vote was in favor of the adoption. Uh, I'm not going to go into details. Uh, Mr. Remundos explained. Uh, it is basically this complex formula is the ratio of installed power divided by the product of capacity times speed, which is the transport work. Um, it is mandatory for new buildings. All have to have. EDI less than or equal to the reference line EDI. And this reference line is a function of ship type and dead weight, and this is the formula that is used. And this reference line, as Mr. Raimundo said, is more stringent in, in, in future years. And to give you an idea of the reference line, this is for bulk carrier, dry bulk carriers, as a function of dead weight. The reference line is the, 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 the red line that you see there. Uh, and the dots are the, the existing fleet. Okay. Now, what are the concerns? The, uh, the concerns are the following, that to reach the required ADI, the correct solution, I mean, this is the, actually the goal, would be to uh, optimize the hull, the engine, and the propeller so that you become more energy efficient. The easy solution, however, and this is the concern, is to reduce design speed or, the, or, or to reduce, which is the same as reducing uh, installed power. Okay, so uh, the easy way to attain the required EDI is to put a smaller engine on the ship so that it consumes less, less fuel. 
And the smaller engine may actually uh, be bad because uh, to maintain speed in bad weather, you may, uh, that smaller engine may emit more CO2. And it also could lead to modal shifts in the sense that if you have lower speed in the maritime mode and you have an alternative to ship the cargo by, by land, which is the case in short sea shipping in Europe, uh, then, uh, then these cargoes may be tempted now to go by land and increase overall CO2. Uh, the other, of course, concern is compromise on safety uh, in the sense that the ship needs to have adequate power to maintain speed in bad weather, maneuver, etc. And there has been uh, several uh, submissions, IX at the previous MEPC, uh, and uh, also uh, from ICS, International Shipping of Shipping, about minimum safe speed. And also there has been a, a submission by Greece at the, the, the latest MEPC on a, a, an interim solution for minimum safe speed of 14 knots. Um, there has been this analysis by Professor Kruger of, in the, of Hamburg University, uh, whose thesis actually is that EDI violates the laws of physics. Uh, uh, and he shows that the maximum allowable power to be EDI compliant goes down as ship size goes up, which doesn't, doesn't make sense. And uh, among, among all ships, the only category of ships that does not have this problem is the category of ships that pollute the most, the, con the container ships. And the problem is particularly acute for Roros. Actually, Roros are the, one of the ship types in which there is no EDI formula yet. And you can see two curves here. The, the one in, uh, in um, green is the container ship. The horizontal axis is dead weight, and the, uh, the vertical axis is the maximum allowed uh, MCR. And you can see the... the, the uh, for container ships, it's okay, but for Roros, uh, as, as size of the ship goes up, the, the maximum allow, allowable e, uh, MCR goes down. Now, I said before that the, these tracks are not really parallel. There are hybrid market-based proposals that embed EDI in, in part of their formulation, and these are essentially two. The one by the United States, so-called SECT, for Ship Efficiency Credit Trading, and uh, uh, combined Japan and World Shipping Council called the Energy Incentive Scheme. Both embed the EDI as part of their formulation, and the idea is you reward ships with a good EDI. Uh, on the other hand, the problem is here is that the EDI is a proposed index for new ships only. There has been no discussion, uh, nor there, there will be any discussion about applying EDI to, to existing ships. So if any of these market-based measures is adopted, then uh, EDI will go through the back door uh, to existing ships. Now, the, there was a, a big discussion last week at the MEPC about this issue, and uh, a number of delegations uh, said that it uh, should be made clear that EDI cannot be applied to, uh, to existing ships. Okay, so there was a kind of agreement among every, everybody that EDI will not be applied to existing ships. At the same time, there are these hybrid market-based measures that are still on the table. So there, there, this is a kind of inherent contradiction. Uh, there's a picture from a de Greek delegation, uh, Mr. Zacharias and Mr. Seferiadis. So there has been a continued discussion on how to best implement EDI. Uh, some guidelines were adopted. Uh, as I said before, there was a Greek proposal for an interim, interim minimum safe speed uh, uh, that uh, will be further considered at the next session, MEP 64, and IAX also intends to submit an interim measure at the next MEPC and some guidelines uh, regarding the application of the EDI have been adopted, method of calculations, uh, the same, uh, as Mr. Mundo said, and uh, survey certification and calculation of reference lines, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I want to say a few things on the market-based measures. There have been as many as 10 market-based proposals last, uh, uh, about two years ago, MEPC 60. There has been an expert group formed by the Secretary General I was part of this of that group. The, 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 this group made a feasibility study uh, about two years ago. Uh, there have been uh, various discussions in 2010, 2011. No conclusion yet about it. Okay, so the, the, this there was a 300-page report by this group, but there was no um, comparison among the market-based measures. So uh, these have been evaluated according to nine criteria. Things like environmental effectiveness, cost effectiveness, uh, incentives for technological change and innovation, 
practical feasibility, several other things, in relation to conventions like Kyoto Protocol, um, or how much is it difficult to implement from an administrative standpoint and things like that. Compatibility with existing enforcement under the IMO legal framework. And uh, very briefly, uh, the, the main groups of MBM proposals, uh, uh, the, the first one is so-called the International Greenhouse Gas Fund, which is essentially a levy on fuel. You add a charge to fuel. Then you have the em emissions trading scheme, uh, su supported by Norway, UK, France, and Germany. Various hybrid proposals, as, as I said before. And some other proposals, port-based, uh, rebate mechanism, the Bahamas proposal. And uh, the distinction here is you have in-sector reduction versus out-of-sector reduction. In-sector reduction is you put a tax on fuel and you reduce fuel consumption. So this is in-sector reduction. Out-of-sector reduction is you gather money from the MBM and you invest in a, a wind farm in New Zealand, for example. Then you, 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 you reduce CO2 in other sectors out, outside the maritime. Now, Greece has not made an MBM of its own, no proposal, but uh, they are, uh, Greece is in favor of, of the Danish proposal, the Levy proposal. So the, the proposal of Greece is kind of narrow down the list of proposals on the table, keep on the table only the Levy and the ETS proposals, put on hold the hybrid MBMs and discard all other proposals. So that was what Greece proposed last year and this year. And the result was that this was rejected. Uh, all of them are still on the table. Okay, so we're, we try to kind of uh, uh, facilitate uh, finding a solution, but this was on the table, uh, this was rejected, all, uh, all are on the table. Um, last week there was also a draft resolution on the so-called technical cooperation and transfer of technology, which is, was foreseen in the, um, uh, at MEPC 62. The idea is that developing countries will get some technology transfer, they will get some money so that they can, they can manage better. So it was brought forward by developing countries like China, India, Brazil, etc. So uh, this was not approved last week. There was no consensus on it. The main countries that had reservations were most of the, developing uh, the developed countries like uh, Sweden, uh, Germany, Norway, uh, they expressed a reservation. So this is, this is going to be postponed for the next uh, MEPC uh, next fall. And then there was also a proposal brought forward by the chairman of uh, MEPC, uh, Mr. Chrysostom, for an impact assessment study of the MBMs. The idea is that you have all these MBMs on the table, then you do a study by some experts to uh, assess their, their impact. And this was supported by the developing, uh, developed countries. So that was uh, after the, the, the previous one was rejected, then the, 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 the in turn was to reject this one. There was no consensus on this one, and then the main, main countries that rejected this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this idea are China, India, Brazil, and, and uh, Saudi Arabia. So this has been postponed for the, for the next session. Okay, so, uh, so far there has been no consensus. Now we have several players that enter the, the debate. One is the European Commission. The European Commission has already supported the IMO measures, but has stated very clearly that if IMO uh, drags its feet, then they will proceed on their own. Specifically, they had said that if there is no decision by December of last year, uh, no decision by the EU27, then they will develop their own proposals. And they have clearly stated that EDI is not enough. Okay, so because there is a decision already by the IMO, so they, somebody may say, okay, we have EDI. But they said, no, EDI is not enough, we are going to proceed with, with our own proposals. What are they going to propose? It's not clear. The rumor is that they will propose ETS, like they did in, uh, with the airlines. Now, with the airlines, they have a lot of problems right now because there are a lot of countries like US, China, Rus Russia, and whatever, they are completely against. So officially, they have all, all the, their options open. They have. Uh, commissioned some studies, and there are a lot of stakeholders that are against the regional measures. So it's not clear yet what the EU will propose. The other uh, set of uh, lobbies, uh, I call them the speed regulators. Okay, uh, wh what, does, what does it mean to regulate speed? To impose a speed limit. Now, there are two ways of doing this. 
I mean, the, the rationale being that if you impose a speed limit, then you consume less fuel, and then you have less emissions. There are two ways to regulate speed. One is the indirect way via EDI. As I said before, EDI imposes a speed limit. And the other is the direct way, set the speed limit, mandate it, set the, set, set the speed limit, like 10 knots or 14 knots. Um, now set, setting a speed limit, of course, if the speed limit is above the optimal slow steaming sp uh, speed, uh, the, 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 the speed that the, the ship owner would voluntarily choose to operate, then it is superfluous. If it is, the limit is below the optimal slow steaming uh, speed, then you may have distortions. Uh, in the short term, you may have uh, higher freight rates, and in the long term, you, you need more ships to carry the same cargo. Okay. So you, if you reduce speed by half, then you need twice the number of ships. Um, it has been already uh, uh, proposed to the IMO by this, uh, what is known as Clean Shipping Coalition, which is a lo lobbying uh, organization, uh, but it was not supported so far. Uh, but they keep, they keep trying. I mean, they had the presentation last, uh, last week, uh, so they, they, they keep coming back, saying that this is the way to go, uh, adopt uh, speed limits. Now, what are the distortions that may be caused by speed limits? You need more ships to match demand, demand throughput. You increase cargo inventory costs. If you send your cargo and you delay it one month, uh, the shipper will incur some, uh, some costs. You increase freight rates due, due to the reduction of uh, ton mile capacity. And you, you, you may induce reverse modal shifts uh, to, towards land-based mode if, if, if uh, Cargos go very slow by, by, by boat, and there is an alternative to ship it by land. Uh, it may come from you know, Trans-Siberian Railway or whatever, or in, in Europe, short sea shipping. Then, then you may, you may uh, push cargos back to land, which is against the EU policy of doing the opposite, shift cargos from land to sea. And you may have also implications on safety if ships uh, go, go slow. So. To conclude, uh, the, 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 my main conclusion is that there has been some progress, but uh, there's still a long way to go to um, uh, ensure an effective and efficient uh, regulatory framework for, for greenhouse gas, uh, gases. The, the long, uh, in my opinion, is long and, and, and tortuous. Thank you very much. <laughs>